Hi everyone, in today's video I will show you how to make this waffle stitch tote bag. I would appreciate if you can hit the subscribe button if you like this video or leave any comment of what you would like to see next. But without further ado, let's move on to the tutorial. So you will need about 150 grams of double knit yarn. I've got this huge one here of 400 grams and it does say uh, to use five millimeter hook. I will be using 4.51. Then you will need a pair of scissors and any needle you have. So the pattern will be made in two panels like this and I've chained 40 basically multiples of three plus four on top of what you have and each of that multiple of three chain will be this little square so you need to chain as many as you want for the width of your bag so you want to grab your yarn and make a slip knot you can do this by making this loop and then grabbing your tail through that loop and making a slip knot put your hook in and tie it up and like I said I'm gonna chain 40 multiples of 3 plus 4 so I've got 36 plus 4 I've got chain of 40 now and this first row will be all double crochets so you want to start into the second chain from your hook so skip the first one and go into the second one and to do a double crochet you want to yarn over go into that second stitch pull up a loop and you will have three on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two once again yarn over go into your next stitch pull up a loop there will be three loops on your hook pull through two and pull through two that's double crochet and you want to repeat this till the end of your row so you will have double crochets of what you chained minus one so basically i have chain of 40 i skipped the first one so i'll have 39 when you made double crochets across your chain it should look something like this then you want to chain one at the end and turn your work you want to make one double crochet into that very first stitch so this round will start with normal double crochet and then into the next stitch instead of going into a regular loop of this v kind of looking stitch we will be doing front post double crochet and what that means is basically we want to go through this bar so behind the double crochet bar so yarn over put your hook behind the post pull up a loop you will have three loops and just do a regular double crochet so this is called front post double crochet and it kind of brings the stitch forward then in the next two you will want to make two regular double crochets and then in a third one front post one so just like that and from there you will repeat this pattern till the end of the row so basically You'll start with the regular one, then straight away into front post, to normal, front post, to normal, and so on. So just keep doing front post to normal ones, front post to normal ones, and I'll meet you at the end where you should have two stitches left. So I've now finished with two double crochets, and there's two stitches left so what you want to do is exactly as we started so you want to make another front post double crochet just like it starts and then normal crochet at the end so these two last stitches will be front post double crochet 
and then normal one into our last stitch. Then chain one, and this side that we see up now is our right side because on this side it will start to shape that waffle pattern. But for next row, after you chain, you want to turn your work, and it's gonna be kind of opposite of what we did on this side. So basically now we want to make two normal double crochets so in the next two stitches i'll do two double crochets and then you can kind of see that these two are facing forward while this one backward is from this side these two are facing backwards more than these single ones so in those two that are facing more forward, you want to do front post. So I'll do two of front post double crochets in the next two. And then where we have that one here, we will do a normal one double crochet. So basically on this side, we did one front post to a normal on this side is opposite it's two front post one normal and this is what it makes a waffle so basically two front post double crochets and then one normal and you want to repeat this till the end of your row which will once again end exactly as we started. So it should end with two front posts and two normal. So it's kind of the same at the start at and the end, but I'll show you this when I do this row. Once you reach the end, like I said, two front posts and two normal. So I'm just gonna do that. Just did two front ones and two normal ones. And then chain one and turn your work. So basically, we have now got one waffle and half of the next one so two rows make one square of the waffle and we need another row to kind of make it two rows so what you will now do is repeat rows two and three until you're happy with how long it is but just to show you once again for the rows that are even like two four and so on you will start with one normal double crochet so i'm just gonna do that And then one front post, two normal ones, and repeat that till the end. And you will finish off with the normal double crochet at the end. Once again, one front post double crochet, two normal ones. And you want to keep repeating those three stitches till the end. I'm now at the end of my round four. And just like for the second one you did, you will do front post, double crochet here, and then normal in the very last stitch. To finish this this round off then chain one and once you've got four rounds you should start seeing those waffles shaping the form and this is how it will look from the back and I will show you once again how to do rows like three five and so on so it will always start with two double crochets in a normal stitch and then two front ones 
So go behind the bar, make double crochet and repeat that once again. Then one normal. And keep repeating those three till the end. And you should end with two front ones and two normal ones. Then once again, your fifth row will end exactly as a third one. So you want to make two front post double crochets. And then two normal ones. Chain one and turn. And you want to keep doing row two and three until you have this long enough and make sure to finish off with even numbers so it finishes with the square just like this one so i've got a total of 26 rows and i i'm finishing on a 26 which is even so my square is in full not in half and then to finish off you want to chain one Cut your yarn off leaving quite a bit for a tail to sew it later on and then you can pull through to secure and then you will need to go ahead and make exactly the same one one more time so you have two sides for your back and then i'll meet you how to join it together when you got your both panels done you want to Put them right sides up so your both veils are here and then fold it right sides in and with the tail that we have left from one of the panels and our needle we will be joining it together so you just want to make sure that all of the squares are aligned and then you can start joining so i have my needle here and i'm just gonna simply go through both of those panels to start off and then kind of leaving it back and forth until it's joined we just make sure every single time keeping an eye on those if those are aligning well but yeah you want to continue all the way around through those three sides leaving the top open i've now completing sewing this side and again i will continue throughout the bottom it is a bit easier because it's our initial chain so it's quite easy to go into one by one and this is what i'm gonna do so it's quite easy but if you do have any other method you like to join your work with you can do that as well whether that's crocheting along the side or any other sewing method but this one is simple as that, just kind of going back and in until it's joined. So I'll meet you at the end. And once you're done with all of those sides, you want to hide your tail on the wrong side. So I'm just going to go in a couple of times to make sure that the end of it is connected. And then I will weave my tail in. I like to go in a couple of times just to make sure that it's hidden and secure. And then that's it and you will go in and hide all those tails that are left hanging 
So once you've hidden all the tails, you can pull your bag inside out so you have the right side facing outside and we will begin working on our handles. So just because I had 39 stitches for my one side and same amount for the other, I will have 78 around and this is what I'm gonna do. If you have a different amount, you just want to add both of those together and this will be the number that you will crochet around. So insert your needle uh, hook into the stitch and then attach your yarn. You can do this by making a loop and then chaining one. Then you want to single crochet around the amount of stitches that you have both of those combined together. So I'm going to do 78 stitches of single crochet. And then I'll meet you at the end to show you how to join this round. So I'm now at the last stitch of round one. I'm just going to do last single crochet and I will join into first single crochet of this round. So you want to book your hook in, pull up a loop and make a slip stitch. Then chain one and we will begin round two. So what round two will be is basically we will do single crochet still third square so one two three and we will skip six squares to join our chain which will be our handle and then we will do another 11 single crochets and we will repeat the same thing on the other side so if you have more squares you need to decide what parts you want to leave and then where you want your handle to start and end. If you have exact same number of stitches, you can continue with the exact pattern. So make 11 single crochets. And then chain one, two, three, four. And I have chained 50 now. So this is the length of my handle. Feel free to chain any length you want, but once you're done with your chain and you're happy with the length, we will be skipping 17 stitches so my 17 stitches are all of those six squares and i will join above the double crochet which is front post one so just exactly like this one and you want to insert your hook into that stitch pull up a loop and slip stitch it together and you want to make single crochet into that same spot There we are just because we did single crochet and then we started to chain and then continue doing another 10 of those single crochets so it's 11 for this side And then chain another 11 single crochets and just basically repeat the same thing we did there so single crochet 11 chain the same amount of chains as we did before skip 17 join here and finish it off with 11 single crochets and i'll meet you at the end of this round and when you're done with your round two you will join this with the same Thing. so basically go into your first single crochet of the round and make a slip stitch chain one and then that's it you can also use 
stitch marker for your first round if you're unsure but moving on you will be doing the same join method by slip stitching into the first single crochet of the round and from now on we will do four rounds and that will be it but basically we will crochet around and we will go into the chain and then through the edge into another chain and finish off and when you're done with your second round you chained one you want to continue with single crochets but from now on you will do single crochets going into the chain when you reach it and when you reach your chain you just go into that chain and continue doing so until you reach this side of single crochet is going to it and then you will go into another chain and I'll show you at the end and when you finish round three you want to join exact same way so make a slip stitch and then chain one and then you will continue doing single crochets around for another three times so you have thicker handles but yeah just continue doing that and you will have about 144 stitches if you follow this pattern so basically 11 11 and 50 times 2 but don't worry if you have a bit more just make sure that your handles are symmetrically placed for both sides and I'll meet you at the end to finish it off so I've just finished four rounds for the handles and I have my tail left so I will need to hide this in but once you're happy with how many rounds you want you will chain one at the end and finish off so just like I did before I'm just gonna be in couple of times back and forth and, and this is how it will look so you can make it in any size basically and do your handles to your preferred length and thickness but yeah if you do have any questions leave them in the comments below and thank you so much for watching this tutorial i'll see you in my next one